Dear learners, welcome to NIS course on sociology at senior secondary level. Today we discuss about the topic marriage and family which is lesson number 12 and 13 of your textbook in sociology. Earlier we have discussed about various social institutions, social society, community, social institutions. So, in that we have discussed about marriage and family as the social institutions. So, in this session we will discuss about what is marriage, what are the different kinds of marriage, what are the changes in marriage happen throughout the years. We will also discuss about family as a social institutions, what are the kinds of family, family and what are the factors that affect family as a social institutions and we will also discuss what kind of changes has happened in family as a social institution in the Indian context and also in the foreign context and also in the as a general social institution. Let us discuss what is marriage and what how it exists as an institution. As you know, marriage is defined as an institution for admitting men and women into family life, legitimating offsprings and establishing other rights and obligations of husband, wife and children. So, here society gives its approval to the marital relationship between a man and woman generally in a civil or religious ceremony. After the ceremony is over, the husband and wife begin to live with each other, thereby forming a family, they give birth to children who are legally accepted by society. So, if we talk about marriage as social institution, you might have seen the, the festivals, the marriage as a festival, as an institution has its diff different rules and regulations. Even you will see the marriage is uh, ceremonized in a particular rituals one after another. If we, if we talk about Hindu marriage system, you, you might find that since it seven days uh, or before fixes, fixation of marriage also, engagement ceremony, then uh, ring ceremony, then the, uh, on the day of marriage also there are many rituals happen and people also invite their relatives, family members and also extended family so that the marriage as a ceremony observed in the in the presence of each and every uh, individual of the society or uh, in the presence of family members or institutions. Even in case of um, uh, court marriage you might have seen that they need a witness who can who can give certificate that marriage has happened with, between both male and female. And in case of marriage as an institution, married couples have to fulfill many obligations towards each other and society in general. In turn, they get many rights and privileges. There are different types of marriage. One is monogamy and polygamy and further polygamy is divided into polygyny and polyandry. What is monogamy? Monogamy is the most prevalent form of marriage where one man at marriage to another woman. So, so monogamy is the most pre prevalent form of marriage whether it is uh, urban society, rural society, you will find monogamy is the most prevalent form of marriage whether you go to the northern part of India or southern part of India or eastern part of India or western part of India, you will find monogamy as the most prevalent form of marriage. But polygamy is also one another form of marriage where uh, a man or woman is permitted to marry more than one woman and man. This is mostly found in case of Northern Africa and East Asia. Polygamy is further divided as I told you into polygyny and polyandry. Polygyny is a form of marriage in which a husband has more than one wife at the same time. Where in case of polyandry, a woman may marry several women of the same, same uh, time, at the same time. So, there are also prohibitive rules like incest, taboo incest. What is incest? It is a prohibited in all society. Incest implies sex, sexual or marital relations between two persons who are related by blood. For example, the marriage among cousins cannot happen. Similarly, due to incest taboo, the marriage, marriage relationship cannot happen between father and daughter and son and uh, so it, ca it cannot happen between those who are close related to each other. So, it so, this is incest taboo. If we talk about exogamy, exogamy is individual marrying outside a specific group of a person who is, who is, who is a member such as kinship group and family. What is endogamy? Endogamy marriage 
happens within one's own social group. The social group may be one's own tribe or caste or religious groups. So, they may marry in different villages, but uh, it happens within only one social group. So, therefore, you find that in caste is an endogamous group where a person from one caste only marries to that particular caste. So, that is called endogamous form of marriage. There is also another form of marriage that is hypergamy and hypogamy. What is hypergamy? It is called where a boy from an upper caste marries to a girl from lower caste. Suppose a Brahmin boy marrying a girl from lower caste is called as hypergamy form, form of marriage. Then what is hypogamy where a boy from the lower caste marries a form of marriage. There is also another form of marriage that is takes place in a particular particular way in particular norm. So, in terms of uh, performing the rituals husband and wife plays a very vital role. So, marriage not only helps in kind of gratification sexual desire, it also helps in provide economic support and also it uh, provide emotional support to the family and also strengthening the society, society in a large. Let us discuss how Hindu marriage is a sacrament. Uh, because that is a major question you are being asked in a, in your examination, why Hindu marriage is called as sacrament. It is considered as sacrament, but it is considered as a religious duty. So, Hindu marriage is considered as a religious duty apart from other functions. As I told you the main objective of Hindu marriage is performance of religious duty like doing dharma, suppose if any yajna is happening in your family. So, they ask that both husband and wife come together and they participate in the sradha. Similarly, uh, giving birth to children that is called praja because unless you have a child, so your family cannot go for a long time. So, when you are talking about the family has to continue for generations, so their marriage has a very vital role. So, giving birth to children is, is an important uh, function in case of Hindu marriage. Similarly, sex satisfaction is also very important uh, uh, concept that is prescribed in the Hindu marriage. So, in, the, in case of if we talk about uh, the rules and regulation, the norms in Hindu marriage, there is no provision of divorce in the Hindu type text. It is considered as a union of two souls which remain faithful to each other forever. Hindu marriage then whatever kind of uh, marriage rituals happen that is that is performed before the most sacred god Agni. So, when you take Saad fair that means we have we have become we have taken a promise that will be one for uh, will be there for seven generations will will be very faithful and uh, to remain dutiful and faithful to for the seven generations. We will be, will help each other, will perform, uh, will help each other even in case of, uh, even in case of sorrow or in case of happiness. So, we will help each other so that the, we can have a happy family life for seven generations. If we talk about Muslim marriage, it is, it is mainly called a civil contract between a man and a woman. It is solemnized in the presence of witness, including the priest who is called as Mallabi. And here, a uh, dowry or fair is paid by the husband to the wife so that she can maintain the life for a long time. But if we look at the kind of marriage uh, was happening uh, four decades back or five decades back, and now we will find profound changes because due to different media and technological support services that has came up and due to uh, media technology and modernity and urbanization. So, changes in form of marriage has happened. You now you will find uh, the kind of marriage are more, more, more of monogamy either due to social pressure or due to status or due to peer pressure or so. So, therefore, you will find most of the marriages are monogamous in nature. Similarly, process of selection of uh, partner has also undergone changes. Earlier, if we we'll, uh, ask your grandfather or grandmother, you will ask how, how you have elect, selected your partner. They will say that 
there was some mediator who was going to uh, going to different places and he was contacting different persons and he was able to manage um, uh, a particular bride or groom for the particular bride or groom but now if you find now the media uh, like uh, there are very various matrimonial sites people are also choosing their life partner over interacting through different social network networking social networking sites so you find the process of selection and partner change has undergone changes sometimes it also happens that uh, the person also choose a life partner in their workplace also so uh, so if you compare the kind of process, selection the partner uh, four decades back and now we'll find lot of changes similar intercaste marriages are, are also being accepted by society and families even there are also various if you look at various states they say that if you'll marry to a particular marry to scheduled caste or scheduled tribes then you will also be given monetary benefits and uh, now uh, the preferences of selecting uh, selecting partner has become more of status symbol more of uh, employment they look at where the bride or groom is located and the people also prefer if they are both bride and groom is working in a particular workplace so they they prefer to marry each other in, instead looking at the caste caste phenomena similarly if you look at the uh, different rules and regulations of the, the special marriage act 1954 it, it also legally recognized inter caste and inter religious marriages also and even you can you can also find due to uh, different rules and regulations like people are selecting the same uh, sex partner like if you, you can find now the lgbt community now the gay marriage also are being happened where the uh, the person chooses uh, the uh, sex of his own own sex own sex so so that uh, that is also new phenomenon has happened similarly roles uh, if if we we'll uh, talk about urban areas the role of parents in selection of mate is decreasing especially in the urban areas although it, it is it is also happening in rural areas due to uh, introduction of various media and technology but you can say uh, now the, even the parents are saying that it is better that you choose life partner of your choice so that we uh, so that we not we may not be in the trouble so now the role of parents is also is decreasing year by year as i told you uh, now the uh, same sex couple are also in uh, seeing in various various places even life in relationships single parent household are also visible in many parts of the country particularly in the urban areas where uh, where both uh, both partner they prefer to have in live in relations instead of going for marriage or even they even if even they go for marriage to go for a go after a long period of time and if you look at uh, the changes uh, in terms of age marital age you will find the earlier marital age was was uh, was uh, very limited like in between if a person becomes 20 or 25 years of age they they got married but now due to uh, influence of education and employment people go for higher education and after after some time they also want to go for job and so uh, the now the late marriages are also being uh, seen in different societies where even there are some of the persons some of the individuals even they don't go for marriage because they want that they feel that the kind of income they have they are not enough or some of the people they want to be professionally grow up instead of growing for going for a relationship so therefore you can find there are now very very many unmarried men also there if you uh, talk about the single person and uh, single person without marriage and earlier times so they will find lot of differences similar to told you widow remarriage act 1956 hindu marriage act 1955 has also come which fixes the age of marriage and uh, the dowry prohibition act 1961 is a very landmark act which prohibits that you cannot neither you can pay dowry neither you can take dowry and if you are taking dowry so you will be go for imprisonment or some kind of fine so dear learners till now we have discussed about uh, what is marriage there we also discuss the kinds of marriage in which we discuss about mm, monogamy and polygamy and po further polygamy is divided into polygyny and polyandry then we also discuss about how changes of marriage changes in marriage happen throughout years how different rules and regulations like widow remarriage act 
Hindu Marriage Act and Dowry Prohibition Act has made changes to the kind of uh, function of marriage. In similar to the function of marriage, we have discussed about how marriage helps in the gratification, sexual desire, economic support, and also it provides uh, eco e emotional support. So, till now, we have discussed about different concepts related to marriage. If you have any kind of doubt, so you can ask us in the uh, following session and uh, we will take a break now and afterwards we will discuss about family as a concept, what are the kinds of family and what are the factors that affect changes in the family. We will also discuss about what are the changes in the institution of family has, have happened throughout years. So, dear learners, if you have any kind of doubt, you can send a an email to us at aosoc at the rate nis.ac.in and hope you are also uh, listening to our Mukta Vidya Bani program and also uh, part, uh, participating in the Swayam MOOCs in sociology, Swayam platform. So, if you have any kind of doubt, you can send a mail, mail, email to us at aosoci at the rate nis.ac.in. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.